Psalms chapter 87. And if you're coming tonight for a great elevation of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, I apologize to you now because you're not going to get it. A psalm or song for the sons of Korah, those are the Levites. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. So, his God's foundation is in the holy mountain. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion, that's Jerusalem, the city of David. It's where God's foundation is. It's where God's temple is. It's where David bought the partial land. It recorded twice in our Bible, the title deed. It's where the dumb of the rock sits today. It's where the world says it's the Muslim territory, but it's not at all. The gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. And Jacob's divided in 12 sons. Those 12 sons are divided all through the land of Cana and two and a half tribes on the wrong side of the Jordan River. Of all the places, and split off into Judah and Israel north, Judah south. There's only one place really of, of a love of God to Israel. It's Jerusalem, Zion, the city of David. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O Bible. And even at the time of this psalm is written, there's more glorious things to happen. You think of all the things that Jesus Christ done in Jerusalem. And then to end his life, he was taken out of the city of Jerusalem, the gate, and he was suffered and died upon Mount Calvary, which Hebrew says is outside the city gates. So if they're going to try to tell you, look at this spot here, it's in Jerusalem, Jesus died. That's not what the Bible says. Solomon builds the first temple there. David lives there. He looks out of his window one day and he sees that the ark dwells amongst curtains. All the battles throughout the, the years and years and years. The most fought land in the world is this piece of land called Mount Moriah. It's the same place not called Jerusalem, but where Abraham took his son Isaac. And God said, offer your only son in a typology of God can offer Jesus Christ. And it's even lied about amongst the Muslims that they say it was Abraham and Ishmael that went up that mountain. And that's a bunch of crap. You can take Ishmael and his bloodthirsty uh, God and throw him into the sewer plant of the lake of fire. It burns forever because that's where Allah's going to go. It's of the children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The 12 tribes. You can tell the United Nations. You can tell the Queen of England. You can tell the President of the United States. You can tell the Russian ruler that that land belongs to Israel. God gave it to one group of people. You tell them. It's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, old city of God. And yet it's also called the city of David. Selah. That's important. So I've told you that's a musical rest. It's also the word that within scripture, you're going to find the second advent. I will make mention of Rahab. And that's a Bible name given to Egypt. Now we're going to look at some cities here. Why they're mentioned, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. Compared to the city of God, compared to Zion 2 and 3, these are not the cities, verse 4. Of God. Though Israel came out of Rahab, came out of Egypt, and Babylon, though Egypt, I mean, though Israel went into Babylon captivity, they went there because of the anger of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many churches today, Christianity today, have gone back to Rahab in Egypt and Babylon with their gods. 
They're going back to what they call Easter, which is Esther. That runs all the way back to Babylon. They go back to their Christmas trees and their Christmas celebrations. That has nothing to do with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We gotta have candles in the church. We gotta have this in the church. We gotta steal from God, you know, the incense smelling of the tabernacle and the temple. And we gotta just do everything that is not what God subscribes to the church age, stealing from the nation of Israel. Because those are God's people. Those are promises given to God and not to the church. The Babylonian gods, the Roman gods, and the Egyptian gods have entered into today's church and have been in there for a long time since the church was much marriage. To them that know me, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. There are people in this area that have known God. But because they're known of God, they're guaranteed there are people in Egypt that came out with Israel to follow the God that had power over their gods. And when God attacked Egypt in the time of Exodus, he was attacking all the gods and deities of the Egyptians, including Pharaoh himself, who was a god. And I guarantee when they're in Babylon, uh, we read the story about Nebuchadnezzar, and he ends up to be a, the human lawnmower, a beast, a four leg, out in, the, out in the fields eating grass. And he comes back, and he says, I give God the honor, the God of the Jewish people, I give him honor. And then he falls off the earth. And you don't hear about him. Why? I think he got right. I think you're going to find Nebuchadnezzar in heaven. But though Rahab, Egypt, though Babylon, they're not the cities. And to them that know me, behold, Philistia. That's a, that's, what's that? That's Philistine. That's the Philistine. That's the area of the Philistine. The enemies of Israel, enemies of Saul, enemies of David. That's where um, uh, Goliath comes from. Enemy of uh, Samson. That's the wrong city. That's the wrong territory. Tyre. <coughs> That's a nation no more. Tyre is up in the northwest. Along the sea coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Tyre was wiped out twice. Tyre was a sea coast community, came in and wiped out, and, and they built a city off on an island. And they come in, use the ru the ruins of the old tire to make a little bridge causeway to the to the new tire and destroyed it. In the book of Ezekiel, God says to the king of Tyre, and you find a reference to Satan himself. With Ethiopia. Well, we read about an Ethiopian eunuch that comes to Jerusalem. He's not safe. And he leaves Jerusalem. And he happens to be reading Isaiah 53. He's not safe. He doesn't get saved when he calls upon Jesus Christ. He said, well, let me get baptized first. He's not safe. And a modern Bible say, okay, let's get baptized and go into the water, and you die, and go to hell. King James Bible says, first you must you must confess the name. And he says, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Then will you may be baptized. But Ethiopia, and I've heard stories from Ethiopia. I know two Ethiopian missionaries, and I've asked him about the question at Ethiopia, and how he's going back and. And preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Ethiopia is not the people. And not the city. Not the place. Now we run into trouble. Here's I don't know. Seven verses and I don't know it all. I'm not going to profess to know it all. And I, we're going to read through these. And I'm going to give you one aspect that may be blown out of the water. But that also blows me out of the water. What we're going to look at in a moment. This man. Who was born there? What man? Born where? Ethiopia, Tyre, Philistia, Babylon, Rahab, which is Egypt. What man? It's not David. It's not Solomon. It's not Jesus. It's not Moses. 
Well, Moses was born in Egypt, but this man, what man? I don't know, let's read more. Put a question mark by that, which I have. And of Zion, okay, there is a city. That's it. And it shall be said. All right, we got wrong cities. They're not the city. All right, we're back to Zion. Verse 2, verse 1 and verse 2. And of Zion, the city that is the city, this and that man was born in her. Problem number two, which is the same problem. Who is this man? Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem. Now, it's quite interesting that the Bible says, and it's really quite interesting. Let's take our Bibles. <clears throat> we'll look at a couple scriptures, I guess. Oh, where is this one? Take your Bibles to Take your Second Chronicles chapter five, verse two. Now we're gonna run into a little trouble here with scripture with scripture. And I'm not gonna say nothing. Because I don't know nothing. Now, I'm not going to make no implications. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to read the scriptures. We all pray about it. And we're going to say this man. And who is he? I don't know. But Second Chronicles 5. Pay attention. Verse 2. Then Solomon. Well we know who that is. Assembled the elders of Israel. Okay, there's, the Is there's the Israelites. And all the heads of the tribe, the 12 tribes, the leaders, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto Jerusalem. Okay, there's Jerusalem. To bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. The city of David is Zion. All right, back to Psalms 87. And of Zion it shall be said, this is that man was born in her. Zion. Huh? Can't be David, he's born in Bethlehem. Can't be Jesus, he was born in Bethlehem. Luke, chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I think. I'm about to look this one up. Look this one up. See if my computer comes up. Luke 2, verse 4. Now we got real trouble. Luke 2, 4. And Joseph. The adopted father of Jesus also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David. Okay, from what we read, we said the city of David is Zion, Jerusalem. The city of David, which is called. Uh oh, we got a problem. Parentheses because he was the house and lineage of David. Verse 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What's the city of David? Zion, Jerusalem. What's Luke chapter 2 say? It says it's Bethlehem. Well, how can it be bold contradiction? No, city of Jerusalem, given that David paid for it. He gave money to uh, the, the Jebusite. I don't know what his name is. 
And the Bible records two places the title deed that David brought that land. That is the city of David. Joab fought into the city of Jebusite and won the city and took it. And David took the castle and became David. How does it become the city of Bethlehem? David was born there. He must have purchased it or something. But then again, he couldn't purchase it. So according to the scriptures, the city of David also is Bethlehem, where David was born and grew up as a little boy. Where Jesus Christ was also born, the lineage of David. Verse 5, Psalm. For our Zion shall be said this and that man. Is he one or another? And this is where the Catholics get confused. Peter, yes sir, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. This rock, what rock? Catholics say it's Peter. Uh, you mean Jesus couldn't have been pointing to himself? He didn't say upon that rock. Then it would be probably Peter. But he said this rock, not that rock. What's this say? This and that man was born in her. Where? Zion. Zion's what? Jerusalem. Now we can't confuse Zion as being Bethlehem because Bethlehem's not Zion. Bethlehem's Bethlehem. Zion is Jerusalem. Yeah, there's two places, say, the city of David, but you can't put Bethlehem as Zion. Those are totally two different places. So David can have two cities. The city he was born in and the city that he ra was raised in and the city that he died in. This and that man. So the writer is pointing to one man and he says over there is that man. I'm glad Jesus did not say that when he said upon this rock or that rock. In fact, there'll be controversy. This and that man was born there in her, excuse me. And the highest himself shall establish her. Who is the her? Zion. The highest himself, that's God, is going to establish Zion with uh, this or that man, this man was born there, verse 4. I hope you're not watching that. Ooh, Solomon's going to give us the answer to Psalms 87. Many of you are from Psalms 87. Well, I didn't know that. There are that many Psalms? How many more is there? Ooh, there's a whole bunch. So let's start at the end of verse 4 again. This man was born there. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her. Okay. And the highest God himself shall establish her, the city. The Lord, okay, got that. Thank you. Whew, that's, shall count. One, two, three, four, five, six. The Lord's a good counter. Have you ever read the book of Numbers? Evidently, there is a time coming that a certain amount of people are going to be numbered again. And there was 144,000, I think, what, 12,000 of each tribe? I, I don't know what, the, I forget how many individuals from each tribe. Guess God's got to count then, doesn't he? When he, God, writes up the people. 144,000? The census of the children of Israel? 
Because there's only one group of people written about is the ones that are of Zion. They have to be Israel. That this man, oh, come on, not again, was born there. So God's going to count a bunch of people. The Lord shall count when he writes up. In, God's going to count a group of people and he's going to write it. The Bible says the 144,000. Now listen, I may be going off the ball here. But 144,000, God said that the, the writer was an inkhorn to write their name of the Father on their foreheads. And the Antichrist counter reacts to 44, 144,000 name on their foreheads with his own name. If God can mark his people, well, I'm going to mark my people. Is it the 144,000? Absolutely, I don't know. Because there's more than 144,000 in the book of Numbers. But we're back to... This man was born there, Sila. That's the second advent. As well, the singers. Okay, there's psalm or song for the sons of Korah. You'll be singing the millennium. As the players on instruments shall be there. Where? Where this man is born. The central theme of this Psalm 87 is Zion. There's going to be musicians there. They're going to be praising God in Zion. And it's not Egypt, rebel. It's not Babylon, though they may know God. It's not Philistia. It's not Tyre. It's not Ethiopia, but in Zion. Go back to verse 4 again. In the, in the verse 4. This man was born there. Where? Zion. And of Zion, Jerusalem, it shall be said, This and that man was born in her. And the highest, the only highest there is, is God. Himself shall establish her, Zion, Jerusalem. That's not going to happen to the second advent. The Lord shall count, book of Numbers, Chronicles. There's a chronicle list of Jesus Christ in Matthew 1. And there's a chronicle list of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's either Luke chapter 2 or Luke chapter 3. I forget which chapter. It's either or. You know why that throws it off? Shall count. God's a great counter. There's 144,000 Jewish disciples. In the, in the tribulation period are counted and written on their foreheads the name of God. You cannot take that verse and say, oh, it goes specifically here in the Bible because there's many places in the Bible. And write it up to people. Like he did in Numbers, like he did in Chronicles, like he did in Matthew, like he did in Luke, like he did in Revelation. That is, this man, oh, there he is again, was born there in Zion, Selah, second Advent passage, as well, as well, singers as the players of instruments shall be there, Zion. All my springs are in thee. Water fountains, water services, water. That's got to be the millennium. Who is this man? I don't know. And I will lie if I told you I did. Now, you want another passage in the scripture that's just as odd? Am I going to compare the two? I'm not. But I'm going to go there because... Oh, we looked at the city of David. 
is Zion, the city of David, Bethlehem. Interesting scripture. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 12. Is this the same character? I don't know. Would you assume? No. Would you say so? No. What are you saying? I'm just reading the Bible. Ready? Here we go. Uh, 12, 1. Chapter 12, verse 1. And there appear a great wonder in heaven, not Mary. A woman clothed with the sun, not Mary. The moon under her feet, not Mary. Upon her head were a crown of 12 st stars, the mother of Israel. Israel herself. Twelve stars, the twelve sons of Jacob. One day Joseph said, Dad, I got a drink. What's that drink? There were eleven stars and they made obese to me. And you, the son, father, and mother, the moon, the Joseph's dream, scripture was scripture, this nation is, is Israel. I know that. And she being with child cried, and travailing birth and had pain to be delivered. Okay, so this is Israel giving birth. It's not Mary. And you will find Catholic pictures of Mary, this picture here with the sun and the moon. You can just look it up, say Virgin Mary Moon, Google image search or, or whatever browser you use, and you will find the pictures of Mary with the stars and all that, and that's a heresy. Because then go look up under Genesis uh, 11 stars and you'll find the dream of Joseph and his father Jacob is the moon, I mean the sun, and his mother is, is the mother of it, is Israel. And she's pregnant with a child. And you also find pictures of Mary. She's stepping on the serpent's head, Genesis 3.15, because she's better than Jesus. That's a bunch of crap. Or use my term it's a bunch of crap <gasps> oh. verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns seven crowns upon his head rulership kingship and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it is born so let's run down real quick verse 9. The great dragon, oh, there he is, was cast out. The old serpent, oh, gee, I wonder who that is, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. All right, back to where we were. Verse 3 and 4. This dragon is Satan. He wants to eat a Hebrew child. This is Israel. The mother is Israel. The child coming out would be if it's Israel, Jewish. And the devil wants to eat this child. Do you know a religion that says if you eat his body and drink his literal blood, it's all literal, you can be saved in the mass. And you ask any Catholic who knows what they're talking about, any catechism teacher of any Catholic caste, and mass and they will tell you that that body is the literal body of Jesus that blood is the literal blood of Jesus and John chapter 1 verse 11 says he came unto his own his own received them not so they are saying they are doing is eating a and drinking a Jewish man that was born of a Jewish woman that's Mary That's called abomination. That's called Catholic mass. That's called Lutheran. That's called the eating of blood. That's called cannibalism. Verse 5. So as soon as this child is going to be born, the devil wants to eat him. And she brought forth a man child. Psalms? I don't know. Just reading. 
Just reading the scripture. But here's a man child who is a rule of all nations with a rod of iron. Oh, it sounds like Jesus. And her child was caught up unto God. Acts chapter 1. To his throne, to God's throne. And the woman fled in the wilderness, it's Israel, she goes in the wilderness, a place prepared by God to feed her 42 months, the tribulation period. Now, is that Jesus? I don't know. She gives birth to a man child. And he's going to rule the, the nations with a rod of iron. But when Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, God didn't call him up to God's throne, to seat at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem and lived 33 and a half years. All over Israel. Who are these men? I'm going to give you the great answer. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I would lie if I told you I did. So we come back to Psalms 87. Are they one and the same? Well, it can't be Jesus in Psalm 87 because this child here is born in Zion. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So Psalms 87 verse 4, this man was born there, Zion. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her, Zion. That's not Jesus. And the highest God himself shall establish her, Zion. That's not the mother, that's the city. And the Lord shall count. When he writes up the people, Jews, that this man, there he is again, was born there in Zion. As well the singers as the players on instruments which do in Zion at the temple shall be there and all my springs are there are in thee. So the conclusion is, I don't have the answer who this man is. I took you over to Revelation chapter 2 because there's another male child. It could be possibly Jesus, but when he was born, he was not caught up to heaven to Acts chapter 1. And I'll tell you something I did not do. I kept myself safe. I want to keep you safe. Well, how's that? When I went through I, I, Psalms 87, I did not go into com commentary. I did not want to see what other men have wrote about this passage. I did not want to pollute at all. My I have been taught through Institute to get my doctrine when we went through Revelation chapter 12. It was a possibility it could have been Jesus, but then we looked at the possibilities on how it could not have been Jesus. And I, I went through the book of Psalms as one of my classes, but you know, being 150 chapters, we went through it as much as we could get, but we couldn't do it all. And I guarantee my instructor if I look at my note, I guarantee my instructor would say the same thing. Who is this man? I'll tell you, he's a man that's born in Zion. And the revelation of this psalm is an event that's going to happen in the future. There's a particular man going to be born in Zion. And he's going to have some importance with God. How's that? We want the answer. 
We want to know who, what, where, when, why, and how. Uh, let's just say the Bible doesn't give the who, what, where, when, why, and how, always. What was the physical birth date of Jesus? Are you telling me that, all right, uh, Jochebed, one day, boom, gives birth to a baby. She's holding that baby. And that baby grew old enough that, uh oh, I can't hide him. What happened between the birth and, I forget, it's three or five months? Nothing happened to Moses during the first five months of his life. And she takes the baby, she puts it in the ark, they put it on the Nile River, his sister watches. And Pharaoh's daughter comes out. She's going to bathe. She's got all her maidens. Make sure nobody's going to peekaboo on her. She sees a little ark. She sends somebody out. She grabs the ark, puts it in her arms, opens it up, and the baby cries. She says, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna make this baby mine. And, the, and the, the baby's sister says, do you like me to go get a, a nurse for it to take care of it? Yeah. She go gets the baby's mother, the Bible says. And the baby's mother gets a welfare system from how bad it is from Egypt to take care of her own child. You gotta be careful what you say. Because Jochebed and Amram were paid to take care of baby Moses. Government paid them to take care of their child. You better be careful what you say. Because that's viable. But that's not my point right now. So Jochebed raises Moses up, and then one day we became of age. She turns Moses over to the princess. But what happened to Moses? Only a very little detail we know in Hebrew. You know, for 13 years, we don't know anything about Jesus. And one day, ooh, he shows up in Jerusalem. And then we, he disappeared for another 20 years. And he shows up at the baptism of John. What happened those years? You know, there are books out there. There are things out there. Oh, you don't know nothing. John the Apostle, in the last chapter of his Gospel of John, he writes, if I were to write everything about Jesus, every detail, the books would not be, you would need tracker trailers. For all the information. We don't get all the entire life of Adam. And what I mean. Adam. Yes. I got a job for you. Good. What's the job? You're going to go in the garden. You're going to dress it. You're going to make everything look good. Oh, okay. Whoa. What's these things? They're animals, Adam. Oh. I want you to name them. And by the time Adam got down to. Oh, bluebird. Oh, blackbird. God, this is getting boring. Goldfish. I mean, you imagine that afternoon. He just, I mean, just by the. And God said, Adam, yes, yes, God, I'm going to make you a help me. Okay. Boom. Here she is. Woohoo. That's great, God. Thank you. She's going to be, she's going to be my wife. I'm going to leave my father and mother, which I don't have. But I'm going to leave, a man's going to leave his father and mother. He's going to twain to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And then, boom, she's in the garden, and a serpent shows up, she eats a fruit. You mean there was nothing from the time that God made Adam out of the mold of dirt to the moment that they ate the fruit? There was nothing happening in between that time? The Bible says God showed up one afternoon, just, you know, it's the cool of the day, and he's looking for to have fellowship with Adam. We never read about those times. And there are things in the Bible. Well, the Bible doesn't say. Yes, correct. It doesn't say. It does not have every detail. But let me tell you for sure as we close. God keeps a detail of you. And he has a book with your name. There's a book up in heaven. It's called the book of Stiley Hayward. That's me. That book began. January 1980s, 1980, 
1968, from the time that I was conceived, and it set forth my record on, on September 6, 1968, God's been recording everything I've done. Man shall give account, he says, of every idle word. I'm going to go so far to safely say without, without ever having to apologize, I think God keeps track of every second we do. Now you listening to me, you don't know what I did yesterday. Never mind last year, or two years, or five years, or ten years, or fifteen years, or twenty years, or thirty years, or forty years. But God does. I don't know who this man is. But there is a man somewhere in Austria. I don't even know where Austria is. I just pulled that out of my head. God knows about that man in Austria. And God is writing the same thing about that as a man in Australia. As a man in Boston, Massachusetts, or down in the Congo, or Russia, or God keeping a record. We may not know who this man is in Psalms 87. We may not know who that man is in Revelation chapter 12. But we know who we are. And when God records our sins, there's only one way to get those sins recorded out of the book. First of all, get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <clears throat> in that moment when you got saved, from the time that you were born to that moment you got saved, all your sins have been wiped away clean. God gets the blood and he washes all those sins. They're gone. But now that you've been saved, one minute, one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, ten years. When we sin, it's being recorded down even as a Christian. It's being written down. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. What do I do? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now you can go to the store, you get that magic eraser. I don't need to go to the store for magic eraser. I need to go to Calvary and say, God, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against the Lord Jesus Christ. I need that blood to cleanse me of my sins. God takes that blood, looks, opens up the page. It's gone. Finished. You're cleansed. You're made whole. Glory to God. And you don't even know what sins it was. And I don't know what sins it was. You know what the greatest thing about it is? If it's under the blood, God don't even know what those sins are anymore. Praise the Lord. Uh, Lord willing, tomorrow night we have Psalms 7 p.m. Psalms 88. And I'm sorry, I did not know great information about Psalm 87. Hopefully I gave you some whipped cream, nuts on top, but I couldn't provide the ice cream. Study to show thyself a food unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. I'd rather say I don't know than to say something I don't know. That'd be called a lie. That'd be called a Pharisee. That would be called a false prophet. And I don't want to be any of those. So Lord willing, hope we see you tomorrow night. Psalms 88.